Welcome back to the One and a Half White Guys podcast, a more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies. Uh, this is, again, a different episode. Nick has seen Joker 2, and I have not. I'm probably going to see this eventually, and to be honest, I'm, I, I have to see it based upon what everyone's saying, but can you explain the general plot of Joker 2 to me? So Lady Gaga... Okay. Okay. <laughs> ...is kind of Harley Quinn. Okay. Condensed as I can get it, Lady Gaga basically checks herself into Arkham Asylum because she has a super celebrity crush on Arthur, who is the Joker, Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Okay. The the Walker. The 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 the, the Joker Walker. The the Joker. The Joker. Okay. Basically, Lady Gaga is there to just like try to bring the worst out of him because she's like, I love the Joker persona. I don't love Arthur Fleck. Which I think a lot of people are going to misinterpret as just like, oh, bitches only want one thing, bro. You know, they only like you for your one. You, you only, they only like you for this one thing. They only, I only like you for Joker. I don't like you for Arthur. That's how it ends, basically, because he renounces the Joker, essentially. Okay, that's that's good. At least he's improving his life. After being <laughs> by Mad-Eye Moody at, <laughs> at Arkham Asylum. Are you serious? I'm, I'm not kidding. He's like sexually... He gets... Yeah, he gets... Oh, wow. It's very alluded to that after he... He fires his lawyer and just like dresses in Joker makeup in the court and just goes on a tirade of like, nobody cared about me until I started murdering. And then he goes back to the asylum. The guards are like, hey, you made fun of us in the courtroom. So they take him to the bathroom and basically... Oh my God. And this is American history X. It traumatizes him so bad that he fucking just renounces the Joker persona in court. And Lady Gaga is just like, I thought I knew you. I hate you now. Just up and leaves his ass. <laughs> That's the, this is American history X. This is what this is. <laughs> and then the courtroom blows up and Harvey Dent's face gets scarred. Ha ha, I get it. He escapes and tries to go find Harley Quinn. And Harley Quinn is basically tells him to take a hike. He's just like, okay. Yeah. And then the, he gets caught, put back in Arkham Asylum. And then another inmate just stabs him to death. <laughs> That's how Joker ends. <laughs> Oh, I got to fucking see this movie, dude. Like, this sounds, I'll be honest, this sounds amazing. This sounds kind of amazing. Here's my, here are my problems with the movie. I just thought it was extremely boring. Okay. Like, the musical stuff is an idea. It's a very half-baked idea that they don't do anything with. It's like... I'm all for musicals. I like musicals. Sure, but it grinds the movie to a halt every single time, even when it's trying to constantly say... This means something. This means something. This means something. And it, 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 in reality, it just like drags the runtime out. Oh my god! Every I rolled my eyes every time a musical thing started because it added nothing. It added nothing to an already just paper thin story that is just one big recap of the first movie. Ah, because he's just on trial for everything he did in the first movie. It's it's so boring. It's sleep inducing. That's that was my problem with it. Honestly, ah. like I don't have a problem with. Arthur Fleck being emasculated or the fact that he has reverted back to his mousy self, like being like beaten down by, you know, the government in Arkham Asylum or anything instead of like embracing his Joker persona. I mean, that's what Harley Quinn's there for. I mean, her name is Lee Quinzel in this. Lee Quinzel. I think she's only referred to Harley Quinn like once. Lee Harker. Lee oh. Harker. <laughs> Solve mysteries with any <laughs> Joker. <laughs> I'm psychic. You're you're a psychopath. Ah, we could do, we could do we could do some really so we could do some good. Yeah, so we could do small good small deeds yeah. in a small town across America. Mind quad, <laughs> and she's basically there just to bring the worst out of him. Okay, all she is is like I have a celebrity crush on you. Uh, like, <laughs> all right, his continue. Words not mine. <laughs> Yeah, but that's what I'm kind this, of worried about. So it's just like people like, are just gonna look at this and be all like, "Oh yeah, this movie is just bitches want one thing from you. What? Bitches ain't shit, and they just fucking they'll they'll use they'll they will take good men and use them are and you, then are break you, them down." Are you saying this is like incel rage? This is like rage inducing incel shit. I I feel like that's kind of what it started. Okay. <laughs> Or with the first one, and then this one is just kind of like they lit a fire under the fanboy's ass, dude. <laughs> like I, 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 I respect what they were trying to do. If what they were trying to do was just like 
No, no, you shouldn't be listening to the first one in the way that you are. Uh, Don't idolize Tyler Durden. Don't idolize Arthur Fleck. Don't (laughs) idolize Patrick Bateman. You know, that's kind of what this second one almost seems like it's saying, but it just says it really poorly. Yeah. And it did not need to even exist. Yeah. Um, Good performances, though. Yeah. Okay. I will say I, I did love the ending. Because, again, major spoiler, he just dies. He up and dies at the end, like, unceremoniously. But when he, it's it's another inmate goes up to him and just starts telling him a joke, and then he ends the joke with, you get what you fucking deserve, and then starts stabbing him, mm-hmm. and then starts laughing maniacally. Oh. And as he lays there dying, you can just hear the guy just carving, like, a smile into his face. Oh. And so I'm like, oh, he was never the Joker. I get it. It's kind of like the idea he started. Oh. They're, they're, Joker can be anybody. Mm-hmm. And uh, this universe's Joker is not him, technically. Mm. It's whoever comes later when Batman might come around. Or is it is it the guy that stabbed him? Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. You know, it's but I, do, I will say I was like, that's fucking interesting. And then the credits rolled. <laughs> and I was like, wow, you just started going somewhere interesting, movie. Damn. Whatever, man. It's, ah, oh, God, I didn't like this. I didn't like it, but it, mostly because I felt it was very boring. That's oh. why. Now, I, I do have a question here. Is Does Lady Gaga at least have a musical number? Oh, yeah. I she imagine. sings. Does she, she sing stuff from A Star Is Born? No, she sings, but at the same time, she feels completely wasted in the movie. Oh, really? She's barely she even in, sing paparazzi. She's barely in. Like, she might as well have. She should have because that's kind of what the I movie is about. Really, have appreciated if Lady Gaga just covered her own songs and just performed paparazzi. The song paparazzi is kind of what the movie is. Yeah, she's just like, I am a big fan. I'm actually rich. I'm not crazy. I just kind of like I'm crazy for you, and just followed him to Arkham Asylum essentially. Oh, yeah. Well, is she gonna date the guy that killed him now? <laughs> that should be the where is that end sequence like if she's if he if he got killed and carved a mouth smile into his face like the end of like inglorious bastard style where they carve something it else into the be my master my, my master prayer. we won't take off that pretty little uniform anyway why are we making him sound like woody harrelson as brad pitt he doesn't sound nothing like it i don't know why woody we would have been really good oh no he would have done well <laughs> he would have done well as brad pitt's character in inglorious bastards i guess we're my, gonna bring carnage to them nazis <laughs> I think that the guy that killed Arthur Fleck should get together with Lady Gaga. You have to watch this movie. I mean, I I think that really sounds think like what the next sequel is. But yeah, she sings. She kind of drops out of the movie in the second oh. half because it just becomes a really boring courtroom drama. And she's just kind of sitting there like in the stands. Joe Pesci's nowhere in this either. No. Oh. <laughs> he would have made it better. I, to, what, to him <laughs> come in and try to defend Joker? Yeah, in like a fucking red suit and everything <laughs> like a red tuxedo and all M- mr gambini <laughs> are you mocking me with that with that outfit <laughs> didn't i explain to you that i wanted you to come in appropriate attire you were serious about that <laughs> keeps putting him in jail straight all the jail for contempt Thank i you. want an edit someone do that please like cut joe pesci into <laughs> joker too <laughs> From, from my cousin Vinny. Oh God! So let me like get- when Joker goes back and sits down after his statements. Joe Pesci just stands up and says, uh, "Everything that guy just says bullshit." Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I, I guess. Oh, one more thing. Okay. The guy, the guy who plays the judge, is the guy in Ted, who Ted says like. I got your wife's pussy on my breath. (laughs) And then he just goes, you're hired. (laughs) Is that guy? I fucking recognized him. All right. So, Nick, if you have to sum up the message of Joker 2, Foley Adu, what is the message? Not everything needs to have a sequel. Anyway. (laughs) Anyway. You know, and I'm an asshole here. I'll be an asshole. It didn't even need a first one. There was a first one? No, it was... You know, it's a really interesting movie that actually has some similar ideals to Joker and doesn't get as much love. Fred Durst, the fanatic (laughs) that it came out at like the same time and it has a similar feel to it sometimes with like the obsession and and stuff like that. And like the guy that's mentally ill, hero worship, all that stuff. And it's John Travolta and Devin Sawa. And I, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's essentially Fred Durst and John Travolta, I think, helped write it. But it feels like they're like all of their fears 
about like what a bad celebrity or like a fan what interaction is. What a is. toxic fan would what be. What a toxic, what a scary toxic fan would be. Yeah, but the problem out. with that is they make him mentally challenged. Yeah. It's like, no, he's like, he, he, he's that. He's not like, you know, criminally insane or anything. Well, I don't know. I mean, it, it definitely. He's not, a, he, like he's not a psychopath to begin he with. He doesn't he's, start as one. But it's also just like, here, look at your, look at your mentally challenged, like, people he's yeah he's clearly got end up like this it's just like that's not fucking true like no it's not necessarily (laughs) that i think it's more of a i don't know fanatic is something where it's like i feel yeah it's like mental illness at first and then there's like this i I guess somebody latching on and you know not getting the help they need can result in something like a little worse and then even devin saw was a monster by the end of it John Travolta set him up, though. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> he didn't do anything didn't until do, John Travolta kind of ruined his life. Yeah. And then it's just like John Travolta gets away, and Devin Sawa was like, "Oh, what? I, I take the fall for this asshole." Yeah, Shit. that's a weird ending. But poor Devin Sawa. <laughs> yeah, poor Devin Sawa. What would you? Devin rate? Sawa should have been the Joker. De- <laughs> that's actually interesting. <laughs> but get Devin Sawa on that. What? Give me a. Give me a rating. A rating? Yeah, give me Joker out of 100. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm not going to rate it. Uh, Probably like a 44. You're going to do the 44? It's, I, I, it's pretty lame. It's the, I can't believe they they weakened at Bernie's 2 Joker, honestly. <laughs> they, is, that, is that like a metaphor because they propped? They killed Joker. They propped up his corpse and they're playing with Actually, it. Actually, Metaphor- I wasn't metaphor- saying that. Meta- meta- metaphorically, man. But you, but you, I don't know. That's a pretty good way of putting it. Yeah, they ruined the Joker. All right, I got one last question for you, Nick. What is the next super villain or villain? Or, you know, what's a weird one to get their own little origin movie? Let's and ignoring your fucking Sony verse. <laughs> I knew exactly where you were going. <laughs> Stupid bastard. I knew exactly you were running to Craven the Hunter. Does this have to be DC? No, like a anything, Batman villain? anything. I don't care. Just who would be the weirdest one to get an origin story? It could be Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, whatever you want to do. <laughs> What's the Nazi made of bees and swarm? <laughs> swarm. I wanna gets, swarm do gets that. an origin story of the Nazi made out of bees in Spider Man. I'll tell you what. Anybody who's a super fan of that movie start it starts getting real questionable. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right, I think that'll do it for us on this one. Thank you for watching this episode of the One and a Half White Guys podcast. Be sure to rate us, follow us, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. And be sure to follow us on our Instagram at one and a half white guys podcast on TikTok at one and a half white guys pod and now on YouTube at one and a half white guys. And be sure to tell a friend to listen to the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and we do kind of sort of talk about that movie sometimes. Yeah, if we feel like it. Yeah. And if you'd like to see more of us, we have a second show exclusively on the Nerd Thusiest YouTube channel called The Weird, The Bad and the Bloody, where we bring to you the weirdest, baddest and bloodiest movies of the 80s, 90s and 2000s because there were a lot of those in each of those. Decades. Joker 2 might be one. All right, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Peace.